Well, thank you very much. And um, I would like to start also by thanking to the uh, Pontificia Academy and Eddie for this great opportunity to be here in this wonderful place. And uh, I'm going to switch a little bit gears and talk about plants right now. And as you all know, uh, one of the most striking characteristics of plants is the capacity of these organisms um, the capacity of these organisms to produce their own carbon skeletons in, in a fas with a fascinating uh, pathway, which is the photosynthesis, and which is responsible in part for most of the living of this planet. And of course, you know that photosynthesis takes place in a wonderful organelle, which is the chloroplast. And chloroplasts, um, if I Okay, chloroplast, um, these organelles, I want to, to emphasize that in addition of being responsible for photosynthetic process, they also are a metabolic hubs of the cells, of the plant cell, because inside of these organelles takes place an enormous amount of metabolic processes that are essential for plants, but that they are also very important for humans. And this includes, for example, the biosynthesis of many important secondary metabolites that are very important for us, for example, vitamins. And uh, chloroplasts, similar to other plastic types from plants, differentiate from an undifferentiated organelle, which we call the uh, proplastids. And proplastids undergo a very particular differentiation process to the mature chloroplast. And of course, this differentiation relies in uh, the nucleus because although plastids are semi-autonomous organelles similar to mitochondria, uh, most of the genes that are required for the uh, functionality of the organelle and the, the differentiation process are actually encoded in the nucleus. So the nucleus regulates chloroplast functionality and differentiation, and we call this as an anterograde regulation. However, uh, from many years now, it has been well established that chloroplasts actually signal back to the nucleus the developmental and functionality state. And they have the capacity to modulate the expression of, of nuclear genes. And we call this as retrograde signaling. And we know now that retrograde signaling is actually a very complex process because it doesn't involve one signaling pathway, but it actually involves many signaling pathways along the differentiation of the organelle. And once the organelle is differentiated, in the process and the metabolic status of this organelle. And uh, in my laboratory for a, quite a while, we have been interested to try to understand this uh, dialogue between the nucleus and the chloroplast and the chloroplast and the nucleus. And we have taken different uh, approaches, but one of them that it has been very interesting is the characterization of the specific mutants that affect the chloroplast differentiation in different stages. And today I'm just going to concentrate it in one example. And I hope I can give you an idea of how chloroplasts can actually modulate the development of the plant. And this is uh, the characterization of one mutant that we call it uh, CLB5, for chloroplast biogenesis mutant 5. And uh, the main issue of this plant, of this mutant, was that it affects, of course, chloroplast differentiation. Um, in the very early stages, um, where chloroplasts resemble proplastid. However, it also affects, importantly, the expression of many genes encoded in the nucleus and in the chloroplast. 
But it what it was very interesting for us, it was that affect the development of the leaves of the plants. As you can see here, they look like finger projections. So we wanted to figure out and to understand more about this mutant. And uh, we went ahead and, try and identified the identity of the mutated gene in this mutant. And to our surprise, we find out that the mutation that produced this phenotype, it's consequence of a defect of an enzyme involved in the carotenoid biosynthetic pathway. And that was surprising because we knew that many different carotenoid mutants were isolated before, and none of them have these uh, developmental defects. And just for, to remind you, carotenoids are very important molecules, uh, are involved in, as photoprotectors for photosynthesis, but also uh, they are really important mo molecules as sources of, for example, hormones, phytohormones, abscisic acid and estrigolactone, and are also the uh, source of many signals, for example, volatiles that make communication between plants, uh, producing also aromas and producing important things like uh, uh, vitamin A. So um, we wanted to know or to demonstrate that in fact this mutant have a specific phenotype compared to other carotenoid mutants. And as you can see here, although we compare several mutants that affect the carotenoid biosynthetic pathway. One, for example, the previous desaturase to the one that we have the mutations, which is a zeta carotenoid desaturase. And as you can hear, see here, I think, or I hope, is that in spite that all these mutants do not contain carotenoids or do not accumulate carotenoids, they have a normal leaf, which is a flat lamina, and our mutant CLB5 had this radialized leaf. So this demonstrate that in spite that all these mutants affect carotenoids, only this one affect the morphology of the leaf. Um, leaf morphology and leaf development is a complex process and I don't have the time to go over that in detail. But what I can tell you is that there are different genes that are expressed at different moments of the leaf development. So we use these markers to try to understand at what stage, in what moment, this leaf was affected. And what I'm going to show to you is that the leaf of CLB5 is affected in established the adaxial, which is upper, or abaxial identity of the leaf. So this is established very early in leaf development. We also demonstrate that CLB5 affects uh, the accumulation of hormones such as auxins, which do not accumulate properly in leaf and which are very important for leaf development. And also, they are affected in the division process to establish a lamina, which is this flat uh, part of the leaf, conspicuous part of the leaf. So um, all these analyses led us to conclude that the mutation on zeta carotenoid desaturase were affecting very early stages in the leaf development. So we wanted to understand why. Oh, I'm sorry, I just want to, to show to you that also we uh, find out that this mutation affect importantly the expression of many, many genes compared to other mutants which are here of the uh, carotenoid biosynthetic pathway. So um, in a summary, we have a mutation in the carotenoid pathway that affect leaf development in comparison to other mutants and that affect the expression of many nuclear encoded genes. So we started to th think whether this mutation was affecting the production of a signal that was communicating to the nucleus the developmental status of the chloroplast. And, uh, 
Um, as I mentioned to you, uh, chloroplast is known that uh, talks and dialogues with the nucleus. And what, it's, what are the signals that the nucleus that the chloroplasts are sending is actually not very well known. So we start to hypothesize that maybe one of the signals that was being produced were actually coming from the carotenoid pathway. And it's, this pathway is beautiful uh, source of signals because as I mentioned, they produce uh, some hormones and they produce volatiles that can go from one plant to other. So, we uh, analyze this mutant, and of course, we find out that the mutation in the zeta carotenoid result in the accumulation of an a different carotenoid uh, compounds. And actually, many of the these have never been found before. So we thought, and our hypothesis was that maybe we were accumulating some precursors of the carotenoid biosynthetic pathway that serve as a signal. Uh, however, another possibility was that ZDS, the zeta carotenoid desaturases, actually were acting as a, a moonlight protein or have a different function that were involved in the development of the leaves in plants. So in order to demonstrate any of these possibilities, what we th thought is that um, if we affect the previous enzyme, right, of this pathway, and if the accumulation of these uh, carotenoid precursors were important to produce a signal, then we should be able to partially at least recuperate a normal leaf phenotype. And if ZDS had another function, then we will never recuperate this. And this is what we found. Uh, when we add an inhibitor of this desaturase, which is fluoridon or norfluorescent, you can have from these finger type projections to a more flat lamina. Moreover, we could also partially complement the expression of several genes and also the expression of several markers from the leaf development. So from this result, we could conclude that in fact, it appears that accumul the accumulation of these two precursors might be important to produce a signal which is talking to the nucleus and modulating the expression of several genes. So carotenoids, as I mentioned previously, are the source of many signals. And in many cases, these signals are produced by the uh, m cutting of the carotenoids. And the enzymes responsible for produce these molecules, which we call together up carotenoids, um, are the carotenoid cleavage deoxygenases. In plants, in Arabidopsis, there are nine genes that are part of this family. Five of them have been shown that are responsible for producing a hormone, ABA. Two other others are important for producing another hormone, which is strigolactones, involving branching of plants. And there were two other ones that have not been um, analyzed at this point. So the idea was that, in fact, if uh, the blockage of the uh, zeta carotenoid desaturase produce the production of these zeta carotenoids, and these zeta carotenoids were subject to produce apocarotenoids, then if we block any of these CDAs that is responsible for this, then we cannot have this signal, and we can have a partial recuperation. And what we did is a genetic, and genetics is a beautiful tool to demonstrate many of these things. and. Uh, to tell you what happened is that we observed when we did double mutants between the CCD4, which is one of the cleavage decoxygenase 4, and CLB5, we can have a flat lamina instead of these finger type projections. We also could recuperate the expression of the gene. This is not true with other decoxygenases that we try. 
Thus, from this data, we could uh, conclude that in fact it appears that these carotenoids are the source of producing a new signal that are important for modulate the leaf development of the plant. Now we have been trying to understand more about these digoxygenases and recently we have found that uh, mutations in this CCD4 by itself affect the leaf development. And in fact, these mutants, as you can see it, compared to wild-type plants, are more round, okay? Also, we have been doing overexpression of these uh, uh, digoxygenases, and we have observed that the overexpression of these digoxygenases have an important impact in the development of the plant. And we produce leaves that are very unhealthy, really pointy leaf, and also plants that are smaller and with many, many genes. So it appears that this uh, digoxygenase plays a very interesting role in the leaf morphology. This digoxygenase, as I have to say, it's uh, localized only in the plastids. So we also have been trying to understand where uh, the ZDS, which is the gene mutated in CLB5, it's expressed, and where the CCD4, this digoxygenase, is, is expressed. And right now, we had found very interesting places. Like you can see here, the, these genes are expressed very specifically in, during the leaf development. For example, in the tip of the leaf and not in the bottom of the leaf. They are expressed in flowers and with different expression patterns. So we believe that understanding a little bit more of the expression pattern may will help us to understand when in a plant is important this signal because it's what we want to know. So um, in summary up to here, I have been showing to you that imitation in the carotenoid biosynthetic pathway accumulates intermediates of carotenoids. And these intermediate carotenoids are apparently the source of important signals that somehow go out and modulate the expression of nuclear genes. Uh, and also affect the expression of the chloroplast genome, which I probably didn't say it, but similar to mitochondria, plastids also contain uh, a genome that expresses only a few genes, uh, but they are very important. Um, well, so now I'm going to go into the last minutes to the biological importance, and that's the main issue we want to solve now, what is important for. And it has been a difficult subject because I have to emphasize that all these plants, this mutant is a lethal, it's a seedling lethal, so we cannot work with it very easy. We have to work it as a heterozygous uh, population. So what we decide to do is to try to analyze the expression profile of this mutant and compare it, not with the wild type because it's very different, but, also, but with the mutant of the previous enzyme, which has a flat lamina. And doesn't have plastid, is albino similar to ours, but it has a flat lamina. And we also compare it to this double mutant in which we restore or partially restore the lamina. And what was very striking to find out is that there were more than 2,000 genes affected in this mutant. And more than that, the majority of them are suppressed in the double mutant with the CCL, CLB5, CCD4. Accordingly, that are related to the development of the leaf. And um, nicely, we find out that many transcription factors have been affected in this mutant. S many of them involve in the leaf development, like I'm showing to showing here. 
and many of them, surprisingly, involved in flower development. Let me just emphasize, we are looking at leaves. However, in these leaf tissues, now we are finding transcriptional factors that are specific of floral development. Among these are some of the, oh, I did something. Among these are many transcription factors, for example, Apetala 3, which are very specific in uh, the flower development. So uh, finally, we are starting to look more about this, uh, but I just want to remind you, probably many of you are not aware, is the fact that flowers, in fact, are modified leaves. So the leaf differentiation process right now uh, expressing specific factors tells a leaf now to behave as a flower. And mutations of trans specific transcription factors such as a petal of three results in the production of uh, flowers instead I'm sorry, of leaves instead of flowers. This is supposedly a flower, but now it has only sepals. And this is a flower that do not have petals, but has only leaves. So we start to think about whether this signal might be important to reemphasize the fact that the leaf is not longer a leaf and maybe a flower. And uh, one of our first analysis was to think what happened if we cross uh, a mutation in the apetala 3, which is a transcription factor important for petal production in the flowers with our CLB5 mutant. And to our surprise, we found right now that the finger tribe projections are completely or partially suppressed in the double mutant which a petal three. So this tells us that it is probably that uh, carotenoid signals are being produced during flower development that reinforces from the chloroplast to the nucleus, the fact that right now they are not going to be any more chloroplasts that are going to be plastids in flowers. So um, I think this is an example of how the evolution between an organelle have really um, is, is impl implicated in the, the whole development of the uh, plant and leaves and flowers. So I think with that, I'm just going to finish and I would like to uh, thank the participants, well, the people that work the, uh, in, this, in this project, my collaborators and the financial support. And I am happy to take any questions. Thank you.